Are you trying to buy a speaker amplifier and you're confused? Should you get a tube amp, a class D amp, a class AB amp, a gallium nitride amp? Are you confused? I know I am, but this is the video for you to watch. Because 100 watts from a tube amp is a lot different than 100 watts from a class D amp. Some of them cost 100 bucks. Others cost more than a used Honda. So which one should you get? Well, we're going to talk about that today. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the different types of amps and then which one you should get. Mm-hmm. What's a capacitor? I will electrocute you. We're gonna talk about tube amps. Now, I'm gonna leave things out, but if you want to put in the comments what I'm leaving out, and if I got anything wrong, please feel free. Tube amps have been around for a long time. Everything from communication to, well, playing back music. They used to be ubiquitous in all of those console stereos that you have and you can still buy them today, and people still love them today. All of these amps we're gonna talk about, we're gonna be comparing 100 watts. And to get 100 watts on a tube amp, well, it's complicated, kind of difficult too. Because they use glass tubes and output transformers. There's huge voltage swings, but people love tube amps. People love tube guitar amps too. Why? Because it adds warmth sometimes. But more importantly, it adds even order harmonic distortion. Generally speaking, people think distortion is a bad thing, but with even order harmonic distortion, you get ambiance, you get organic placement in space. Three dimensional sound stage. The music feels like it's real. The singer may be coming right out at you. For 100 watts though, you're gonna require a whole bunch of tubes and a big output transformer, which is heavy. You can get a tube amplifier for $500 and it could go up to, well, 15,000, it, basically name your price. Some people describe the sound as being warm, rich, romantic. Sometimes it's harsh in the mid range and too forward. That's my experience. And well, bass can be a little bit slow, a little bit soft. However, people love them. You get electrocuted and die. But what if you want to reduce the risk of your house burning down because of fire and not have a space heater in your room playing music? Well, then the next amp type is for you. Class A amps. They use transistors, technology, and they're always on and they get hot too. Not quite as hot as some tube amplifiers that are making 100 watts, but if you want to make 100 watts from a Class A amp, well, you're gonna need, it's going to need to be big and heavy and hot, and it's really inefficient. And they don't like to put out a bunch of power, so a 100 watt Class A amp is going to be super expensive. You can get a Class A amplifier around $1,000, but they go all the way up to five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. Ultra smooth. Some people think they maintain some of that tube magic, but yet they can push more bass. But even these, the more affordable ones, you're really probably gonna top out around 30 to 50 watts. Unless you wanna take out that second mortgage. They sound great, and in my opinion, way better than tube amps. However, if you want your living room not to feel like a Las Vegas bathhouse or sauna, maybe you should check out the next type of amplifier. Why not both? Why not? Class AB amplifiers, chances are you've listened to one of those and you may own one right now. They're awesome. Now you have even more technology. You have two types of transistors and they're sharing the workload. And this amplifier is not always on. Therefore, it's not as hot. It's not that Las Vegas bathhouse sauna. Much more efficient, and 100 watts doesn't even make a Class AB amplifier sweat. The bread and butter of hi-fi, personally, my favorite. Very affordable too, you can get a decent one for around $300, but again, you can pay just about as much as you want with a Class AB amplifier. The sound is balanced, full body, depending upon the amp. We'll get to that at the end though. More neutral than a Class A or a tube amp. 
And a class AB amplifier, well, it's not on all the time. They, they switch on and off, but it takes up a little bit of space. And if that's too big for you, well, then the next amp, amp type might be right up your alley. Off, on, off. Class D, look at all of them. They're so little. Class D, whoop, class D amplifiers are little and they solve the efficiency problem because their transistors switch on and off real quick, very fast, extremely fast. The output is filtered into smooth audio on paper, but not always in practice. 100 watts is super easy to achieve as long as you have a powerful enough power supply. You will see some of these amplifiers claim crazy power numbers and then they have a 12 volt, 5 amp power supply, and 12 times 5 is 60. That means 60 watts is probably about the most you're going to get. And they're cheap, but they have tiny little circuit boards which can get hot and it's not really repairable. You have to get the whole board replaced. Power supplies can be sketchy and cheap, and you can buy one for 60 bucks or you can buy one for $6,000. Early Class D amplifiers, well, they sounded Pretty terrible, grainy, glassy, harsh, not a lot of bass, but they've gotten better. Texas Instruments 3255 amp chip, really all the 3200 family is fairly good. Sounds pretty organic. And the more expensive ones can, well, also sound thin, grainy, inorganic. However, they've gotten significantly better in the last few years. Not my first choice, however, in a pinch, Class D amplifier will get you through. But sometimes you have to kiss a lot of these paperback book sized amplifiers before you find that wonderful leather bound prints of an amplifier. That's a terrible analogy. Gallium nitride. It's the latest and greatest thing. It's pretty heavy too. Instead of using a silicon chip, these use a gallium nitride transistor. It's faster switching and cleaner. Less distortion, more efficient, kind of like Class D, but took some testosterone replacement therapy and then went to finishing school. It's a refined monstrosity that may still have emotional outbursts at inappropriate times. They're kind of expensive right now, around $1,500 to $2,000. Sounds perfect, what's not to like? Well, I don't like anything new. And if anybody says something's really good, like a new restaurant, I don't want to go there. I don't know why. Probably because I'm counterculture, Gen X, something like that. But new things scare me. So what does all this mean? See, I knew there's a catch. There's always a catch. Tubes are beautiful, fragile, low powered, and a good one's expensive. And you're going to have to change out a bunch of tubes that are no longer made and have to be shipped in from other lands. Class A, pure but hot and inefficient and expensive to get some decent power out of them. Class AB, reliable, workhorse, been refined. Parts are inexpensive, designs are mature, they're awesome. Class D, efficient, cheap, but guess what? I mean, there's still a whole bunch out there that sound like garbage. Even some of the more expensive amplifiers from established brands sound like Garbage, thin, clinical, not organic. It doesn't sound like music to me sometimes. But just like the internet, Class D amplifiers seem like they're here to stay. And gallium nitride. Everybody's talking about it. However, it's new, it's pricey. It doesn't have the track record that Class AB or even Class D has at this point. And here's the biggest takeaway. There's not one right answer. Even Class AB amplifiers, which I love, are a mature technology, a known quantity. They all sound different. It depends on who designed it and what parts they used to make it. You can't just say Class AB is better than Class D. Well, you can't actually say that. You can't just say Class AB is better than whatever because they all sound different. You can't just say Class D sucks, even though most of the time it does, because they all sound different. It's like a painter. Give two people the same paints. One makes the Mona Lisa and the other makes dogs playing poker. One goes in the Louvre. The other one goes into a blockbuster bathroom. I've used these jokes before. I hope that you like them. There's also things to consider like power supplies, noise, crosstalk, 
all that stuff can be refined on well, almost all of these amplifiers. Because a 2001 Hyundai Accent is a car, and so is a Mercedes S-Class. I don't particularly like either of them, but they're both cars. They both use internal combustion engines, but they both give you a very different experience. One has rolled up, win roll up windows. <laughs> like that uh, five-speed uh, uh, manual transmission and the other is German and while everyone's falling all over themselves to pat GAN GAN gallium nitride amplifiers on the back and crown them the greatest thing on the planet well guess what those all sound different too so which one's the best well it depends on you some people like dogs playing poker other people like the Mona Lisa personally I like Norman Rockwell doesn't mean any of us are wrong. So which one is for you and why? Put it in the comments. And if you put that in the comments, tell me which one is your favorite. If you like this video, why don't you check out a video about why cassettes are the best physical media format ever created by man. Not because of how they sound. I will put that one right up here. I'll put another one up here about the truth about bookshelf and tower speakers that nobody's talking about. If you want to support the channel, you can check out some of my merch. I'll have that in the description. Also check out my Patreon community. It's awesome. And my patrons are a lot smarter than I am. Thank you for watching.